Welcome. The goal of this screencast is to explain and demonstrate how to encode, decode and encrypt the crypt data using Uniface. Uniface 9.4 provides the ability to encode, decode and encrypt the crypt data by using Uniface PROC functions. Encoding means to change data into something else. Encrypting also means to change data into something else, but you also need a key to decrypt. The dollar encode supports the most commonly used hash functions, hash message authentication codes, HMAC, block ciphers and encoding schemes. For a full list, please refer to the documentation. So let's have a look at the types of algorithms supported by dollar encode and dollar decode. Hash function is any procedure that converts a large amount of data into small data, which we refer to as hash value, hash code or hashes. When you use hash functions to encode data, it will return a fixed length data as a hash value. And from the hash value, you cannot get back the input source, so it means it is unfeasible to find the source from a hash. It is also unfeasible for two sources to generate the same hash value. So when would you use a hash function to encode data? You can use the hash function to encode a password or credit card number, and then store the hash value in the database. When the user logs in and enters the password or credit card number, the data is immediately encoded and compared with the one stored in the database, so the password or credit card number itself is never stored. You can also use hash functions to convert a large amount of data into small amount of data. It can be used for comparison to find out if original file has been altered or not. And some sites that allow you to download files will use a hash algorithm and publish the hash value. So after downloading the file, you can use the same algorithm to encode the file and check the hash value against the published one to check the integrity of the downloaded file. Block ciphers is the normal encrypting. You use a key to encrypt the data and with the same key you can decrypt the data so you can get the original information back. So if by accident someone gets the encrypted data and if they have the key then they can go back to the original data. Block ciphers have this name because the data is divided into blocks and the blocks are encrypted separately. The same data encrypted with the same key always generates the same result. This could lead to some security issues. For example, white area is always translated to this type of cipher text, which will still allow you to guess the original picture. So modes of operation have been included to improve the security and increase confidentiality. These are the modes of operation available, again fully documented. If you use modes of operation except ECB, you need to provide an AV. The AV does not need to be secret but the key need to be secret, of course. IV stands for initialization vector. Don't reuse the same IV with the same key. The reason for that is if you encrypt, let's say, an X amount of uh, different files and you use the same IV and the same key, it is possible for someone to infer what key was used. So you can create an IV by using a random scheme or a timestamp and store it together with the encrypted data so it's available during decryption. With 9.4 we introduced two new functions, $encode and $decode. This is the syntax. The parameters are algorithm, source, key, mode and IV, where the last three parameters are optional depending on the algorithm used. This is the list of the supported algorithms. The names in parentheses are synonyms, so you can use them as well and the result will be the same. When you use block ciphers and HMAC, which is a kind of a hash, a key is required. The key should be of a specific length depending on the algorithm. If you use a key that's longer or shorter than what's required, then you will get an error. For Blowfish, for example, you can use a key that's be in between 4 and 56 bytes. For some others, you need to be very specific, and this is all documented again. You can specify the mode of operation and if you don't specify it, the default is ECB. If you specify any mode except ECB, then you also need to specify the IV, the initialization vector. 
The IV is any piece of data, it can be string data or raw data. Some notes about encoding and decoding. Because the return value may contain the new byte, $encode and $decode returns in the uniface raw data type, which is binary safe. So you should assign the output of the function to a variable type raw and not string. If you need the result on a string variable, then you can encode the result again by using base64 hex or URL. And here's an example of how to do that. The uString algorithm was specifically made to change the data type from raw data type to string data type, and for the other way around, which is to change from the string data type to raw data type, you can use uRaw. Remember that uString does not encode or convert a string, and it doesn't convert between character sets or anything like that. All it does is to convert data type.